All right, what we have here is called the 1 million tweet map. This is one of many tools you can use to search Twitter. Uh, it's nice. It shows the whole world. You, here you can see we have these different clusters that they call them of numbers. You can see it shows how many tweets are coming out of those regions. Up here in the upper right, you can, of course, zoom in and out using these uh, plus and minus buttons and make pretty big jumps. But if you have any scroll feature, you can do that as well. When we're looking at these, this is the default opening you're seeing here up here of nothing searched and it's just on a regular search. You can go to the hashtag battle to search specific hashtags. We'll notice here, we'll say near the Northeast of the United States, we have 273,000 tweets. And up here in the left, you see it's showing the tweets tracking. Now I can pause this. I'm not sure of its purpose because no matter what I click on, unless I refresh the page, this will continue counting and it's going to count from the time I got on and shows the last, I believe it's the last 60 seconds or last five minutes. And you can see these numbers climb and you see these little dots. So when I click on this, what happens is it zooms into that area and then it gives a more expansive, the region they're picking. We can see here over around Cincinnati, we got 5,900. If I click on that again, it keeps going in. Now, when we get to this point where we see the Twitter symbol, that's showing one specific tweet coming generally from that area. This speaks also to the fact your information is being tracked. And of course, some of these people could be using a VPN in another country. But when you click on just that tweet, it's going to show the tweet itself. It shows the account. This guy's at who's your NF, what he wrote. This link is a link he put in there. If I click on the from at who's your hiking, it will take me to his Twitter account. And it shows he posted on the 29th at 1330. And then the, these feelings based on people's reactions. So if I click on that, you can see it takes me right to his account. So if it's an account you want to see, you can see all the stuff that they have posted. And then, of course, we can click on the link he put in there and we can see what it goes to. It goes to that specific tweet that he posted. And when it does that, on that link, you can see he's responding to a National Forest tweet here. So it puts it in basically into context. Now, these other ones, they'll just keep zooming in. We do that 13 and it comes here. Now we got 12 in this area and then it's one specific area. Now, when it zooms, the map zooms in quite a bit. These numbers won't zoom in anymore. You can see the streets here. Instead, it'll make a list of the ones that are coming out of there. Now, if you're interested in why I use Twitter, it's actually pretty simple. I use Twitter because what's great about it is people put on things that are happening right now. These are great tools for national events, emergencies, anything else. Now over here, we it starts on the cluster layer. So I'll zoom back out. So the cluster layer is basically all these purple circles. The day night later, all it does we have to zoom out more to see it, is it puts in a shadow to show you where day and night is based on the time of day, wherever on the planet. Heat map changes it to a heat map cluster. Now, it just shows those heat map clusters. And let's say we get rid of cluster, and it looks kind of weird. But what it does when we zoom in is it gets more specific to those areas. And then instead of just using circles with numbers, it gives you a heat map based on the locations of where tweets are happening. We see a lot are coming out of Maryland and New York, high population density, so that's part of the reason why. And as we zoom in, they get more specific. So you can use heat map. You can use heat map and cluster at the same time, or you can just use cluster. I tend to stick to cluster. That's just me. In the rendering, it shows cluster view. Sentiment view is basically showing the likes, the shares, that kind of thing. That's nothing I use. I use this for strictly research. You can, of course, use that time filter. So this is based on no time filter, um, based on the time frame that they put this in. Um, one of the things we'll see here is if we do a time range, we can put up to the last 24 hours. And in here it has defaults, 5, 10, 15, 30, 15 hours, 10 hours. When I was tracking the election, uh, when we had the inauguration, I had, I had knocked this down to about 5 minutes, 10 minutes. I was tracking it constantly. So we see these numbers up here, you know, 1,100, 1,000, 8,700. This is on 24 hours. So if we go down to four hours, we'll see those change a little bit. See, now we're getting smaller numbers. The highest one is just under 2,000. We go to five minutes, and it gets more sparse. So it depends on the time frame if you have one. Another one is start now. You can use that to start tracking information now based on however you want to go with. I stick with no filter because I look up general things. Down here has the an analytics that shows... Um, in the last 24 hours, top five hashtags, top countries tweeting, United States almost always the top, the cities, and right here in the United States, Washington being D.C., Baltimore, and as we saw, Maryland in general, those areas were high population areas, 
of tweets coming out, and then languages are English. Now, one of the things to note about languages, um, and to add to that, by the plus or minus, if you just click the world icon, it goes back out. If we go back over here, let's go up here into Africa, and as we start zooming in, we may find, we'll see if we find one, we may find them in other languages. This doesn't have a translator built in if it's in another languages. So you'll have to use a translate feature. It doesn't have like, hey, I want everything in English. Now that being said, when you're searching words, it gets more specific. So if we look for, say, any tweet on dog training to keep it simple, we see the numbers pop up and changed over here. And even on a world view, we can see here in Alaska, there's a tweet in the last 24 hours that doesn't require a cluster. And it, whatever that's for. But it's linked to base the search engine on a dog training. Now, if we look up, let's say, uh, just politics, general terms, you're not getting a lot of hits. Uh, we've got a lot coming out of England right now, some in America. So we'll click on 44, and we'll see here in Utah, we got a link about politics. They mentioned politics right there in the wording. Here out of Portland, Oregon, politics is in the wording. So when we do something back again, like dog training, if I can learn to spell, that'd be awesome. What we will see here, we do this one again. On dog training, we'll go back to this one in Alaska. There's dog written in there, but you notice there's no word training. Now, if we try this in quotes, doing a standard simple Boolean search, We'll notice that tweet disappears and we only have one tweet and it shows dog training videos. So basically what happens is when you're not using quotes, it's looking up the word dog and the word training. So if you're looking up something like this, you need to put the quotes in there. Use the standard Boolean searches you can find on Google and other sites showing you how to search their search engines. So it depends on how specific you get. Let's see. Let's look up. Joe Biden, the president of the United States. When we do that, we get a lot of hits, and a lot of these are going to say Joe Biden. What we're looking for is to see, do we still come out the same? And the United States is probably mostly going to say Joe Biden, but we might see things that say just Joe. Like this, this is just Biden, but it doesn't say Joe because we didn't use the quotes. Somewhere in here, there's probably a tweet that's going to say just the word Joe mentioning coffee or a person, but not mention Biden. So using that, let's go back over here to another Let's go over here to Eastern Africa on these three tweets, see what we got. That has Joe Biden. I imagine, though, somewhere if we looked hard enough, we'd find ones that just say Joe. There we go, Joe Rogan, because it mentioned Joe, but we didn't have it in uh, quotes. So what this is great for is, let's say you're looking for something like we had an active shooter recently, unfortunately, in Colorado. When you search for something like this, and we would have went for active shooter, not only can you find things around the world, and these, again, are saying the word active and shooter. So we're going to put the quotes in. We'll probably see these numbers drop down and change. There we go. We only went down to one because we put it in quotes. There's currently a gay active shooter in George, on George Washington. I'm not sure if that's a real threat or what's going on there. So it just depends on what you're searching and you can get more specific on it. Let's see, look up the word riot. We see those pop up. And as you notice, when I'm using general terms like this, I stay zoomed out because the numbers usually are pretty low. So up here in Scandinavia country, a riot against public university, that's Brazil today. Okay, well, let's go down to Brazil and see what's going on in the 28 posts they got here. And here we mentioned, see how this is in not English, so they don't translate it. You have to translate that, but we can see the word riot in there. There again, right. So whatever's happening that they're talking about. And this is part of how I use it. I find stuff in other countries. When I was tracking the inauguration, I was looking at tweets around the world. I saw all kinds of dignitaries throwing out support and seeing what was going on. Here's one on a riot. Riveting gameplay. He's going to start a riot if it doesn't go his way. It's a riot referencing like it's a laughing joke. So it just depends on what you're looking for. So... If we wanted to look up the active shooter in Boulder, Colorado, we search like this, it's going to pull up. Like here in Colorado, some of these will be the active shooter, but in some of these other places, it'll be just the word active, just the word shooter, just the word Boulder. 
We can come here and see what kind of stuff. There's Fort Collins. And Sarah just mentions the word boulder. So if we go back and throw the quotes in, let's see if we find any tweets. Now the downside to this, let's say you want to do historical research. If you want to do historical research on that active shooter, you can't because it's only showing things in the last, I said 60 seconds, it's things in the last 24 hours or what it, the time range or what it goes down to. Well, I'm on five minutes right now, so let's go back to no filter time range. And we got nothing. So no matter what I'm doing, we got nothing on that. So we'll get rid of Boulder, just try active shooter, and we go back to this tweet, I think, from earlier. So that's real simple. That's how to use the 1 million tweet map. What this is great for is finding information. Let's see. We'll look up elections. There's going to be a lot of elections going on. It's great for finding information on specific subjects that are going on in the last 24 hours or going on right now, especially things like that active shooter. People on the ground, regular everyday people, share everything through social media, but they tend to do things. Let's see what we got here. Let's see, elections. Let's go to another part of the world. They tend to use Twitter a lot. More people use Twitter actively and constantly throughout the day than other. See, they're mentioning the 2020 elections than any other situation. And when we used to track terrorists, things with social media, Twitter was hard to deal with. And we would find stuff like this and information and people are sharing stuff constantly. So what this is great for is something the last 24 hours are ongoing right now. I go straight to this as one of the tools I use to look up information anywhere in the world on a specific subject that's happening very recently. If I'm doing historical research, is not the one to use. This is a simple open source tool to track Twitter information from the regular everyday person or anybody that has a Twitter account to see what's going on. And as I'm talking, I'm just going through here so you can see the kind of stuff what's, what's happening. This is on the elections in Nicaragua. If we open that link, it takes us there. It'll put us in context if there's other things. There's a news uh, brief right there from Ambassador James Hill. And then any related information. Hashtag battle, you just look for hashtags and like this, compare happy or sad. You can compare two different hashtags. If you're looking up a specific subject, these are great for things other than just research. But you can put in the different tags you want to use. So that's it in a nutshell, the 1 million tweet map. It's not the only Twitter tool out there, and there's plenty of tools to use. But I think this is one that people that are doing open source research on what simple everyday people are putting out that want to find up-to-the-date information on recent activities in the world on a certain event or just a certain sentiment of something like saying you were tracking and following the elections all last year, you could have checked stuff every day to see the differences and what was going on.